What do you think about? I deserve that shot or no? Please tell these guys. I think you definitely deserve that. Let's go. Shot. Let's go with your chicken. Now you tell that bitch to come up, and I'm gonna sign on the dotted line. This is my weight class. If you wanna talk shit, I'll be the first one to sign that dotted line. Mark my words, bro. You're gonna get the real local cooey. I don't even care. They made Ferguson Khabib official. Talk is it would be for an interim lightweight title. How do you feel about that? Whatever, dude. I'm gonna get that belt either way, one fighter at a time. Oh my goodness! Hit it all over! I wanna beat Tony Ferguson, take interim bullshit belt, and after fight with Connor for real belt. Right here. This should be it. Michael should tap or he's gonna break his arm. He's gonna break his arm. Hit it all over! Saturday night, the interim lightweight title will be awarded to the winner of this excellent fight as Khabib Nurmagomedov will be taking on Tony Ferguson. Nurmagomedov, not a blemish to be found on his mixed martial arts record. He will be coming into this fight taking on Tony Ferguson, who has won his last nine. And this is just an outstanding fight, Cody. A fight that as soon as it was announced, everyone was salivating. And the fact that it is five rounds, I think maybe an argument in favor of an interim championship because unlike in a lot of cases where someone is hurt or we know they're on their way back, we don't know when Conor McGregor is going to defend that title. I really don't have that much of an issue with an interim title here. This is one where I think you, it wouldn't be crazy to say Conor McGregor does not defend that title in 2017. No, that's exactly it. And if he doesn't come back, you want a bona fide champion. And obviously the winner of this fight is going to be exactly that, a bona fide champion. When you have two world-class athletes like this, it's almost robbing them a little bit, putting them in a three-round fight. So not only do I enjoy that it's a five-round fight, but add that gold on the line. You've got a great storyline here in that. Khabib Nurmagomedov sorry, has pretty much had zero trouble taking guys down, holding them down. But when you look at Tony Ferguson, how do you hold down a guy like Tony Ferguson? He's so explosive. He has such a good ga gas tank. He has that speed advantage. It just adds so many different questions to the fight that I love it. And I think that the only way you can get a real answer on it is by giving them five rounds to work with. All right, we're going to hear from both of these lightweights as we send it back to John Ramdean and Robin Black. Uh, but before we do, let's take a look at their last five fights. It's looked spectacular for both of these guys, although somewhat deceptive, Cody, because in the last number of fights for Tony Ferguson, he's found himself having to come back from adversity, but has finished off his opponents in doing so. Yeah, it's also interesting to note that there's been a long layoff for Khabib in between some of these fights because of the knee injury, whereas Tony's been just very, very active. Also, you look at that last performance against Rafael Los Anjos, was a five-round fight, and Mexico City at altitude, you know he's going to be prepared whereas we don't know for sure that Khabib can go five hard rounds. Yeah, perhaps the best fight we have seen Tony Ferguson involved in a great performance back against Rafael Dos Anjos. Now we send it down to Las Vegas. An interesting fight in the co-main event of UFC 209, the interim lightweight championship on the line. Khabib Nurmagomedov taking on El Kakui, Tony Ferguson. We were at the open workouts. Both guys looked spectacular. Yeah, they sure did, man. Tony is incorporating outside ideas in movement and rhythm, break dancing, different uh, abilities to chain, kinetically chain parts of his body together. He really looks like a different kind of hybrid. And Habib just looks like exactly the monster that you think he is. Psychologically incredibly tough, incredibly driven. You get that vibe off this whole team. Really want to mess with these guys? Such mastery as he gets closer and closer to your body and on top of you. This fight is just, it's the best fight in the world right now. What's incredible about it is the Eagle understands how good Tony Ferguson is, and he says he's not underestimating Al Kukui. Uh, I don't like this guy too much, to be honest, but we have to give him respect his game, you know. And uh, this Saturday, hungry Eagle's gonna eat home cat. It's like this. I see this a little bit like this. He's that guy, I guess. He's the one that gave me this fight, huh? So I guess he's the one that really fought. So I think he's gonna go out there and fight himself. He's got issues, man. If he says that he wants to give me this fight, I'm like, dude, you're a fucking next in line. You fought Michael Johnson, which was a number five or number six. I've been fighting my way since I broke my arm. I started, what, at 21 after I broke, before I broke my arm? Shot back up to 60-something? I didn't bitch not one fucking time. I worked my ass off to get to where I'm at. So for a man to say that, that dude's naive, man. He's listening to his manager too much. I think he needs to go back to the drawing board and fire that dude. I think he's much better than, than Conor. Conor have, uh, Conor have very good skills, like boxing skills, uh, you know, but Tony have elbow, knee, unpredictable, you know, his ground game is good, his condition good, like, maybe his, Tony's boxing not good like, uh, like, uh, 
corner boxing, but like MMA fighter who is better, I think Stone is better. You know what, I gave Conor a pass. I'll keep reiterating that. I gave him a pass. He got a pass from me. I told him, go spend some of that money. Go do what you're going to do. Enjoy your new kid because I, trust me, I work my ass off for this. I take a blue-collar approach and I love it. I don't have to talk the talk. I walk the f***ing walk. So as far as Conor goes in the belt, dude, that dude is so, just so far out there. I hope he gets it in his head and comes back to the real top. This is where we're at. So this belt, I consider it the real belt. Regardless if it's interim or not, if I can hold it and I can feel it, and if it's f***ing shiny as f***, it's real enough for me. And Robin, I think when you're talking about 145 pounds, 155 pounds, and even 170 pounds, the name Conor McGregor is going to creep into the conversation. Both guys recognize how big of a star Conor McGregor is, but if Khabib, if he feels, if he wins this championship, that he's only going to give deserving opponents an opportunity to face him. For example, his manager told me, Nathan Diaz, he doesn't believe Nathan Diaz deserves a crack at the title. Tony Ferguson, because of the run that he's on, because of how talented he is, that he deserves this championship. And he feels that he's going to change the game and that that's what his mantra will be moving forward. Yeah, you know, okay. So Conor McGregor changed the game by behaving the way he did. And then all these people started trying to act like Conor McGregor. They want money fights. They want to they act a certain way. What you do if you want to change the game is you do it differently. And that's what Habib's talking about. He's doing it his own way. He's not going to be some prototype of what's working. He's going to do the opposite. He's going to change the way that people perceive fighting, change the way that this whole thing is, is, is coming together. And to me, that is brilliant. Don't imitate. Uh, innovate and Habib is an innovator and that's innovative thinking and normally I don't really care one way or the other who's getting what title shot or why but going out and doing the opposite of what everybody else is doing that is how you innovate. Tony Ferguson clearly has done what he has done to deserve this championship he's exciting he's very different he's uniquely Tony Ferguson and because of that we saw all the fans of the open workout they are rallying behind this guy. Yeah they rally behind these two this is the fight everyone's pumped about don't get it twisted we are all very excited about the welterweight uh, main event but this is the fight that's got people talking. The UFC 209 we will see the crowning of a new interim champion. Cody these are two very complex styles to break down I just feel in this fight, it's inevitable that Nurmagomedov will be able to take Ferguson down. The difference from a lot of opponents Nurmagomedov has fought is that Ferguson is as comfortable as any lightweight off of his back. But we watch a lot of these Nurmagomedov fights, and again, I go back to this new scoring criteria. He is tailor-made for these new 10-8 rounds, where it's not just dominance on top, but it's damage that he's inflicting on his opponent. And Nurmagomedov has always talked about his striking game. It doesn't get the appreciation that his grappling does, that his Sambo background provides. But that is something that uh, maybe we will see on display Saturday. Well, the traditional thing with Sambo striking is that they just wing these wild punches, and where a good technical striker, that might not work on them. Tony Ferguson is a good technical striker. However, he fights very chaotic. He leaves those openings. So if there ever was the kind of punch that could just be landed, it's going to be landed on a guy like Tony Ferguson that, that creates that fire in that space. And that is where I think he's going to create the openings for Khabib, because whether it's getting the actual punch, we even just see in those open workout highlights that he's rolling for the knee bar, that he's thinking about certain, oh, I'm going to dip down and I'm going to spin. It's like, that's not the kind of, this is not the kind of opponent that you want to try that stuff against. Khabib is a nightmare stylistically if he ends up on top of you. And the thing that we have seen in the past with the Tony Ferguson, whether it be his fight against Danny Castillo or whether it be against Abel Trujillo, he can be taken down. Whether you can hold him down, that's a different question, but it is possible. The prelims are going to be kicking off Saturday night, 8 p.m. Eastern time. If you're in Canada, tune into TSN2 for fights coming your way from Las Vegas, Nevada. Coming up. After more than three years away from the sport, GSP will make his long-awaited return to the Octagon against Michael Bisping for the middleweight title. Ramdeen and Black give us the reaction from Vegas.